So last week right after Thanksgiving, my buddy Mark and I decided to take a couple days and head east to Hyannis, Massachusetts to fish on the Helen H. party boat. And they were heading out to George's Bank to do some bottom fishing, specifically cod, haddock, and pollock. And we didn't get any haddock, but we did get some cod and pollock and a few other interesting fish uh, like you usually do when you're bottom fishing that you guys will see here. Uh, we left at 3 o'clock in the morning, but it was a long ride out, so you can see by the time we're getting ready to fish, it's already light out. It was a little bumpy in the morning, uh, but it did lay down as the day went on. Actually a pretty nice day. And if you guys get the itch to do some ocean fishing, even over the winter, uh, there are quite a few boats on the east coast that keep trying to run trips when they can, when the weather permits. And, um, you know, they'll go out for cod or haddock. Um, or maybe to talk or something like that so there are opportunities if you guys want to go um, I'm fishing most of the day with a 14 ounce cod jig and a red teaser a couple feet above that that I tied myself uh, Mark here is fishing a just a high low rig uh, with a 16 ounce sinker and pieces of clam on the hooks and uh, that's what that's what we start out with and that's what we fish with most of the day so We'll get fishing here. Uh, you guys will see we're, at, we're on the side of the boat and uh, it's a little tough to fish. Uh, we did get uh, quite a few tangles, uh, but you're gonna have that, especially when you're fishing deep on a party boat. Um, the guys on the bow and the stern definitely did the best. They were able to kind of work together and cast out, fish it around the swing and get a little more time on the bottom. Uh, but we were one of the last guys to, uh, you can see here's a, Nice example of one of the tangles here, but we were the last couple guys to get on the boat and they loaded you in order of uh, how you booked your trip. So we were one of the last guys to get loaded and, and pick our spot. So we ended up on the side, but we'll get fishing here and catch some nice fish. I got a, I got braid right here. Gulpin master. So this is one for my fish ID experts. Mark caught a few of these. Um, I believe yeah, they're sure a four spine or a four horn sculpin. Pretty crazy looking little fish, puppy. but he caught a few of them. So uh, my fish ID experts, oh, yeah. comment below on this video and let me know if, that's, uh, if I'm calling this thing the right name or not. I'm gonna measure this one here. I think it's about 17, 17 and a half. And a half. So I gotta throw him back. Cut have to be 23 inches to keep. And we did catch quite a few undersized cod. I would say I caught about eight myself throughout the course of the day that were right in that 17 to 18 inch range. Uh, go uh, Mark. Mark's got a little nicer one there. Yeah, a little I longer. I believe that one was a keeper. I think I snagged me another one, Margie. I think I got this one in the anus. Ah, you can throw them back. It's all hooked. <laughs> That's the only way I can hook them, that's it. After doing this, I would definitely recommend a level line setup for doing this kind of fishing. I did bring a spinning setup with me as well, and I only tried it one drop, and I didn't like it. And uh, you can see Mark and I are both uh, kind of using the rail of the boat as a fulcrum here and kind of laying the, the handle of the rod on it and that keeps you from having to keep the rod high and support it all with your own strength. 
Um, so that's really nice. You can do that with a level wine setup, but not a spinning setup. So definitely recommend the level wine for this kind of fishing. Oh, that was close, Margie. So while I'm cranking this one in, I talk to you guys a little bit about the setups we're using. Uh, we both brought our uh, tuna jigging gear. I have a 6.6 medium action Travala tuna jigging rod. Mark has a little heavier tuna jigging rod. I think his is a 7 footer. We both have heavy braid on, I think 80 pound braid and about 50 feet of 50 pound mono on the end of that spliced with the Albright knot which I can show you guys later um, and uh, his reel was a little higher gear ratio I think it was around 6 to 1 the reel I was using was only 4.8 to 1 and that was pretty slow honestly for how deep we were fishing around you know down around 200 feet so if you guys are gonna come do this I would definitely recommend a higher speed level wind reel uh, with that around that six to one gear ratio. Otherwise, uh, the cranking up is pretty tedious. <laughs> Snagged him. Yeah. Yeah, he did. Mark caught a couple of these fish, uh, which the guys on the boat called a choggy. Nice. Uh, I guess they're also called a cunner. Uh, they look very similar to a to tog, actually. I guess they're a cousin to them. They're really good to eat. And Mark actually caught a couple of these guys. And you can see they got some gnarly little teeth on them. But uh, really good eating fish. And uh, so we were happy to catch a couple of those. about the scupper. What do you call that? Right, we call it like three different things. Yep. The flying lure. Presently, no. Feels heavy. Unless I got, unless I got three other people in there with me. You trying to get my zone, Margie? No, I'm just, I, I think I'm in you or something. Like that. Like, from yeah, you. he is. He's trying to get my. He pulls that. He pulls that on me all the time, man. Yeah. I'm out. I'm loose. That's him over there. The foul hook Pollock. So you can see all day we're just kind of bopping from spot to spot. Basically the captain would line us up on a piece of structure 
and uh, we would drop and basically get two drops on the spot and then usually uh, you would drift it off it so you drop down you know, jig it a dozen times or so and then you'd be either under the boat or too far out you'd have to bring it back in and uh, then if you're quick you could reel it up and uh, drop one more time and get a few jigs in before he told you to pull it up so uh, that's kind of how it was all day just uh, bopping from spot to spot trying to grab a fish here and there uh, that's another cod right there on the, the teaser I would say I caught probably 90% of my fish on the teaser and not the jig and uh, the jig was a little light honestly it was a 14 ounce uh, cod jig and the guys up on the bow and the stern I think were fishing 20s and uh, maybe even 24s and even when the wind calmed down there's still a ton of current out there so next time I would definitely uh, bring some heavier jigs if you guys are gonna do this definitely bring some heavier jigs um, and uh, those 20 to 24 ounce jigs will help you get down there better and catch more fish. What you get, Margie? You a keeper? Might be. Well, we're jigging right to the end here, guys, trying to catch a few more fish. We did get into some nice pollock right at the end. Um, but uh, you can see the sun setting. So basically, we fished from sunrise to sunset. And it was a it was a long day, but uh, definitely beautiful weather, better than we expected, really, especially for like I said, late November in the North Atlantic here. So, thanks to the uh, captain and crew of the L and H for uh, getting us out on a cool trip. Definitely learned a lot, caught a few fish, but uh, learned a lot for uh, next time we go. We had a long ride back in and the mates were uh, cleaning fish for everybody on the way back in, everybody that wanted them cleaned. And the fish cleaning was included with the price of the trip on this boat, which was nice. Uh, that's not always the case. And we did a nice job. Uh, there he's cleaning one of our smaller pollock. And uh, definitely always remember to tip your mates, guys, too, if they do a good job. Uh, those guys are working hard all day, untangling lines, cleaning fish. And they don't always get paid a lot. so. Like I said, try to remember to tip your mates. And if you guys decide to go do this kind of fishing, uh, hopefully this, this video will help you out. And uh, hope you guys enjoyed it.